uh, most of the versions that have come to pass so far. And uh, Aster is kind of a unique one, having played the game in multiple versions for the speedrun, uh, something you don't see a lot of people do, but it looks like we're off. Yes, so uh, three bombs. Okay, yeah, that's a good way to start. Not really think something you think about, but in this it's quite important because, you know, you're routing in all these important things, but, you know, are you routing in rupees? Are you routing in safeties? Are you routing in, you know, bombs? Boots are very nice find. Now, of course, they have had the opportunity to immediately search and hit Control F on their notepad, spoiler log, or whatever text uh, editor of their choice is. They knew where those boots were, so naturally both of these players very excited to have an opportunity to grab it right off the get-go. Um, I do agree with you that it was pretty interesting Christos picked up those bombs and Azder did not. Um, perhaps Azder is looking to find those bombs elsewhere. Now, I do believe I saw... Because uh, the commentators do have access to it, there is a tree pool. Tier 2 tree pool uh, is bombs. And a power glove. And a sword. There may be a bit of a theme here with these swords that, um, that Christos is on the hunt for. Uh, his choice to go towards Hyrule Castle early may be reflected in that. Um, we're going to see Asder though, trying to get his progression through, as you mentioned, the gloves. Uh, Kakariko, also a hotbed of items um, in the same sense as well. So probably not a lot of time lost between the two. Uh, although Asder does ha have the challenge of not being able to dash directly through enemies right now. There's some money. Maybe a Zora required? I didn't do a thorough check, because I do like being surprised by these uh, races still. But... It could imply Zora, it could just be pot money. I'll say this much, if Asder was going through three of those four chests, I'm gonna guess he needed that money. Um, and he is actually going to take the time to buy bombs, um, which is interesting to me. Uh, he did have an opportunity, as we saw before with Christos, to immediately pick up three. Um, but I get the feeling he's on the same path as Christos is now heading towards um, the mini Moldorm caves, which we see Christos dealing with right now. Yep. Hey, maybe it was to get more bombs to kill the Moldorms. Price packs in that uh, spoiler log, because that would actually be good for like next tournament to have. I think so. Um, I didn't see what I was looking through it myself, although I, I think that um, admins have been talking about that, so I might have just missed where it was in the log. Um, but as you can see, Christos just saved and quit after a very productive uh, mini Moldorm cave. We see that lamp and the bow here. Um, taking some time, Master, on his side to pick up a heart piece, may have forgotten exactly which chest it was. Yeah, we have a Master Sword, we have a Lamp. We have area access. So far, um, looks like a lot of retracing the same steps between the two. Um, if I had to guess, I would say that based on execution so far, Christos has a slight edge having already done his Hyrule Castle stuff. Um, he also appears to be heading into the back half of Escape a little bit earlier than Asdur will. Um, as there's likely heading directly there after this, he may take his route actually through the castle, depending on, um, you know, what seems smartest in his eyes. Execution in the um, in the early game in the spoiler log tournament is really critical because we don't have say ten or twenty curl. minutes. Oh, what is in the? Uh... That would probably be a dark crossplay, since I'm assuming he would just jump back into the back if that's where he was going. Oh my. Yeah. So dark cross has something. Tempered sword. Yep, that's right, folks. Barely five minutes into the race. Ah, oh, looks like Azure's taking a tactical um, death warp, which, um, considering the way he went through the castle, actually makes a lot of sense. 
Also, knowing these players and their skill level, that is probably going to be their last sword, is tempered. A thought occurs to me, is uh, Christos already heading to Agatham? Yep, so I guess it is an Agaseed. Of course, having access to the spoiler log, they do know for a fact, yes, this is an Agaseed. Uh, something to keep in mind for the folks at home, um, do some slight syncing between the two and their timers. Um, that's why we don't have Christos Owen's timer on screen. Um, but they also do, the, they use their timers to also count up to for the time that they have to study the log. So uh, they may be slightly off from each other, but this is approximately synced up right now. Ooh, careful there, Azure. Uh, this is a fantastic opportunity to see what low percent, um, you know, skill comes into play here. Both Azure and Christos actually do run low percent um, as a category. They would never have the Tempered Sword to do this, but functionally speaking, very similar. Um, you see them doing some um, regular execution stuff like dashing through small spaces on Azure's side and Christos narrowly avoiding the guard uh, patrol RNG. Not having a good day with the bow and arrow, unfortunately. Wow, both of these runners are absolutely tearing a rampage throughout this um, castle tower climb. It's a little disorienting to not have a shield at this point, though. Both of our runners have actually lost a little bit of time in these rooms, uh, expecting to be able to block spears. And we will see how many blue balls there are today. Now, of course, that will be um, consistent between both runners, um, the RNG for bosses, for example. Uh, so they won't have any difference in, say, for example, how many blue balls they have or warps from Ganon. Um, but for those of you tuning in who haven't seen the spoiler log tournament so far, just a brief explanation of the format. Uh, both runners get 15 minutes prior to the race start where they can both openly read the spoiler log of the seed. Uh, they get that much time to prepare themselves to run the seed as fast as they possibly can. And of course, all other rules like a normal Link to the Past randomizer fall within that. Um, we see a lot of races sub 130, probably even some sub one hour. Um, we've definitely already seen faster than that this tournament. Yeah, we got a really jet seed that was like 52 minutes. Well, stuff like the Castle Tower climb is certainly going to add to the uh, misery. Um, although I think they may end up ending, ending uh, their journey in mire at some point. Uh, but that may take a while. There are a few other things that they need to consider. So when you're looking at a spoiler log, um, you're looking for a lot of things. You want to figure out how your progression chain works. You need to figure out what you need to do to get into certain dungeons. Uh, this is a puzzle that they have to unfold in their minds, sometimes even as they're racing. So it's also of note, they are allowed to watch the restream and each other's streams. Um, this is something that's actually encouraged in the spoiler tournament, though, to be honest with you, I think it's probably pretty difficult. I mean, it might be nice to have open in the background, and just so that you can poke in a little bit, see. Okay, where am I at? Oh, this person's this far ahead, I should probably, you know, hurry it up a bit or something. Or, hey, I got a little wiggle room, like... Well, you know, I have a little time chat. to go pick up a heart container. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, they can tell whether or not they have the opportunity to take more safeties. Um, I think Hazder, based on him saying something in chat, suggests to me that he forgot that moon pearl. Oh, dear. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it.
And it appears that Christos Owen, not exactly sure where he wants to go now that he has Dark World access. I mean, uh, both of these writers clearly had that priority in mind, get to the Dark World. Also keep in mind, he was having a little stream issues earlier, so... Some of those pauses might not be... ...confusion so much as just, like, stream being a thing. Oh, we forgot rupees. Okay, well. How interesting. The, the one thing that each of them did differently from each other is forcing both of them to double back. So with that, if my counting is correct, I believe Azure actually pulls ahead here. Yeah, it looks like it. So judging by um, the route that Azra's taking, I believe we're looking for a uh, hammer, or we need to ha get a hammer eventually. Um, he will be opening up the Palace of Darkness and picking up a few items from there. Um, that's certainly why he's there. I don't think um, without hammer we're really, or even bow, we're too worried about completing the dungeon right now. Or I'm sorry, we have bow. We got that from Mini Moldorm. So now, where's our hammer going to be? You know, I've got a hunch that um, Azure's going to become very attached to an item here in this dungeon. Yeah, probably. It could be a bit of a stretch, but he will reach out and grab whatever it is that he needs here. <laughs> you implying the hookshot? Well, like I'm just saying, he's going to grab onto uh, progression in this, you know dungeon in some way or another. He may have read that line, or I'm sorry, that uh, spoiler log, hook, line, and sinker. Oh, goodness. Yeah, then there's that hook shot. I find it kind of interesting that uh, Mazder decided to pick up another key on the way through. That is a uh, nice time save, considering we won't have Mirror, uh, or likely won't have Mirror the next time through. Uh, taking advantage of one trip through that section of the dungeon. Um, very smart routing. I believe Christos will likely do the same. Both of these runners have had to deal with Palace of Darkness key logic in like every possible conceivable configuration, so I would not be surprised. All right, well, that's East Dark World Access. Or, not East, West. Sorry, I'm bad at directions. I'm very directionally challenged. Well, absolutely no problems with Hinox is here in Northern Dark World. Um, Christos also having picked up his hookshot is almost assuredly in the same uh, path in mind. Um, there are a few different directions we can go here. Uh, Azder does have a choice between, you know, obviously Skull Woods is the first immediate thing in this path, and Village of Outcasts, both of which are things that he will need to stop at. However, I do not know what it is in Thieves Town that we're looking for. Um, to be honest with you, I did not see anything in the spoiler log for this dungeon. Perhaps just looking for uh, completion here. Hey, we got a route diversions. Just a casual reminder to all of you out there, this is hard. Um, they have three and four hearts, respectively. Um, 
they're incredible for trying that. Uh, it's something that I would not be able to do personally. Christos Owen braving the dungeon with half a heart. Uh, really nothing making this man fear anything. Well, Christos, having found his uh, compass chest there, will have both of his gloves now. Um, has quite the Dark World access all around. Um, still going to need that hammer for certain. Um, probably the next thing that he's concerned with. And Asder's heading to uh, Hype Cave, also looking at his log. Perhaps we should reflect on his choice. So I'm um, a little surprised to see the blue mail pickup from uh, Christos. Um, there are a num number of items in Village of Outcasts to pick up. Uh, we saw Azder actually miss this um, chess game that Christos just did. Um, so that's two items that Christos is routing in now that could potentially come later. Um, I think it is wise to probably do that before, say, finishing Skullwoods. Certainly needs to just to get there. Ah, now that's a tree pool you don't see very often. Uh, if you look to Christos Owen's screen, uh, that statue is one of several other statues you can pull on. Uh, you can even pull on the lucky foot of Turtle Rock's entrance, uh, interestingly enough. And uh, knowledge of those things, I mean, that's awesome that he can refill all of his bombs right before heading in. Unfortunately, waste it on a bomb chest. That a tree pool I actually found out about because of Inverted. Or that statue pull, I should say. Wait, what? Where was half magic? Uh, it was the last chest in Hype Cave. Um, Azur very deliberately avoided that. Now, keep in mind, um, everyone at home, you know, there's only a certain number of things that you know you're going to expend an entire magic meter on. Um, as of now, based on what we know from the logs, uh, the only thing I can think of is just killing Cold Stare. Uh, so he may feel comfortable not getting half magic, um, maybe not feeling a need to do it at all. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm very familiar with his gameplay. He is a very good runner, so I would not be surprised if he's perfectly comfortable without half magic. Yeah, I figure if you can do low percent, you can probably handle not having the half magic. However, um, Christos could save time just by having more magic available to him. That was a very convenient chest. Oh, I, I think that uh, he's explaining now in chat. Apparently, his notes just didn't include it. All I want to know is how does he find time to type? <laughs> Maybe, um, voice to type. Look, all I'm saying is that I mean, he's that good of a speedrunner that he can literally finish sentences between screen transitions, and that blows my mind. Well, I mean, voice speech programs are a thing, I think. What a madman. All right, well, Moldy Worms notwithstanding, um, as they're absolutely obliterating Tower of Hera, both of them stopping to pick up the Book of Medora, um, certainly something that our viewers should keep in mind. I think both of them know exactly what they need that book for. Well, of course they do. <laughs> Tablets? Or maybe desert?
Uh, despite both of them having picked up their book, that does not appear to be the priority universally for what they're going to be doing. Uh, Christos appears to be taking Dark World Portal north of Kakariko. Asder heading towards the uh, Quake Monster? I mean, he has the mirror, so, um, but no. No, yeah, he's, he's going just north going across. Ahead. Remember, they don't have Mitz or Hammer, so that's their only way to West Dark World. And uh, with that slight difference in routing, um, they're already kind of catching back up to each other in the same locations. Um, Asder does realize now where his other glove is. Uh, we'll be heading to the um, compass chest to get that. In the meantime, Christos Owen's going to give us seven quick digs here to get an item. 300. Oh, mm, Zora got something? Absolutely looks that way, and Christos is no penny pincher. We'll be picking up every app, absolutely every rupee he can to hit that 500 mark. Uh, bear in mind, of course, they have both opened up Palace of Darkness already, so that 500 appears to be the most that they're going to be factoring in. Although something uh, I saw somebody learn the hard way, blacksmiths do cost 10 rupees, if you ever need to do them. That is absolutely true. Which, I mean, you know, after we save their lives, like, you know, what's up with that? They're, they're twin brothers, they get to see each other, and they're still gonna charge you 10 rupees for it? Come on. I mean, for such a very useful sword, I'd say 10 rupees is a very cheap price for it. Hammer! Maybe it just costs a lot to dye a sword red. You know, they just had to cover costs. But yeah, absolutely. That hammer is um, instrumental. Um, you would say it's a tool to success in this scene. Um, Christos picking it up nice and early um, with explosive results, hopefully, from that Bombos tablet. Uh, we'll take that and head west. Uh, Azur will pick up the mail that we saw Christos Owen pick up earlier. Um, this, of course, will lead to him picking up the fire rod as well. Uh, fire rod? Yep. Like you said. <laughs> I'm receiving Senator. word here in the commentary booth that I am uh, being threatened by a cane of Samaria to be yanked off the stage. Chat, we Sen love you. This may be the end of me. Simic, our <laughs> lovely <laughs> tournament organizer. Yeah, mega shoutouts to um, the Sinac. I mean, absolutely amazing to put in the work that it takes to make a tournament run. Um, for any of you out there who have never run a tournament, good luck. It's tough. Yeah, it, it's a very rough job. So, spoiler alert, this guy's awesome for doing it. Everybody, if you get a chance to see him, thumb thanks. Alright, I kind of uh, used the spoiler alert joke too many times already. That's really, really uh, <laughs> driving the value down on that one. My apologies. Yeah. <laughs> well, onwards and upwards to Thieves Town for Christo So, and uh, we saw Azure pop in here earlier, but certainly wasn't going to be uh, trying to complete that on three hearts. I mean, G gave it a go, but yeah, that was tough. Um, certainly better equipped this time around. We'll see if uh, Christos Owen has any trouble with that. Azder, in the meantime, appears to be fully equipped for Skull Woods, but is heading back to Village of Outcast. Indeed. So, uh, these time? You know, judging that they both kind of went out of their way to grab him, or I'd say something's probably in the big chest.
Well, just kind of a guess. Absolutely, there is. Um, very astute guess, and I'm guessing that you didn't see this. The what it was on the log. No. No, I was just guessing based off of their actions. Ooh, the dash, the the god pixel, Azdir, with a quick correction, manages to get through uh, Hellway with absolute uh, clarity. Um, we will see here in just a moment exactly what kind of tune uh, Christos Owen will be singing upon checking that big chest. Um, but yeah, I mean, 100% you had that right on the nose. I mean, you wouldn't go out of your way to get hammered before Thieves Town unless you know something's in the big chest. Hey, up, flute. You know, suggestions in chat that it probably was flippers, I would not have been surprised, to be honest with you. I've seen enough flippers in Thieves' Town for one life. I will yeah. give you a hint, folks. It is in the, the quote-unquote vanilla location, as we like to say in Randomizer, if, uh, if that's a hint based on anybody who's heard my commentary before. Yeah. Also, yeah, that would be such an orphan check in a regular randomizer seat. <laughs> Certainly wouldn't be a fun time for anybody. Uh, Christos, though, with just one heart down, um, you know, clearing through blind pretty easily. Uh, certainly showing a commanding authority over that boss, um, getting this done very quickly. As they're not that far behind either, um, pretty much ready to take on the boss right now. Uh, to those of you in chat asking about it, um, yes, this is a triple header between these two, if necessary. Um, they're doing all of these back to back to back. I <laughs> guess you're not the only punster today. You know, I regret to say it, but I missed the pun. Uh, my requires ether, um... Bombos or Quake or something like that. Either Quake or Bombos. Yeah, it's a, it sounds like a smart alecky thing that uh, Blind would say. The first time I read it, it took me like a minute to be like, wait, so you're giving me a hint and then somebody's like, no math girl. It's either my Quake or Bombos. Not either Quake or Bombos. All right, so flute there it is for Aster. I'm going to activate and go somewhere. Um, Christo seems to have immediately decided that Palace of Darkness was the correct choice, and we are fully equipped for it, so certainly just as good a choice as any. Uh, so they get the spoiler 15 minutes ahead of time. Oh, so we'll see another divergence here. Um, as you're making great use of the um, of the sword climb, now that we have the hook shot, a very fantastic uh, time save on ladders, uh, we'll be heading to East Death Mountain um, as Christos continues to finish up uh, Palace of Darkness. Now, I believe there is another item that we need to get in here, um, and certainly he will end up finishing the dungeon on this trip. Pay no mind to the runner uh, disparaging himself in chat. This is actually like a very difficult thing to do. 15-minute uh, routing, particularly in a seed like this. Man, I wish I could multitask like that. <laughs> I started. You're making me want to laugh and sneeze at the same time. You know, life hack, if you ever need to sneeze, look at a bright light. Yeah, I appreciate my eyesight too much for that. Oh, 
Oh, dear. Yeah. Uh, no, Delta Quebec. Did you happen to catch what he uh, just picked up in Hookshot Cave um, on Azure's side? Quite. According to chat. Well, I've heard of uh, putting keys under the doormat, but that's pretty much as close as you can put it to the Turtle Rock entrance. Now, um, you can also see on the tracker that Turtle Rock is not a required dungeon as far as uh, progression for killing Ganon goes. However, for us to see as they're opening it, I'm sure there's something in there that he has seen and gleaned from the uh, spoiler log itself. So he's going to uh, paddle his way through here pretty quickly and hopefully uh, emerge from that uh, progression well. Hopefully not drown in the process. <laughs> Flippers or... Ooh, silvers. Yeah, These Chris are nice. is absolutely melting that boss. Oh my goodness. Hey, thanks, game. I could have used that about a minute ago. I have the sneaking suspicion that there are people in the uh, administration of this tournament who are regretting my puns. <laughs> I'm gonna guess by the five Whatever ellipses. Whatever would give you that inclination, believe. You know, we do it for Azure. I, I believe Christos also appreciates good puns, but, um, you know. <laughs> I'm surprised I haven't seen him in uh, the chat at all this uh, race. I would surely think that he probably has the restream open. Christos yeah, probably just doesn't want to get distracted. We have a sudden revelation in chat from one of our runners um, about the nature of Turtle Rock's uh, prize at the end of it. Um, but he is still going towards what he needs to get from the dungeon, so I'm presuming that based on the slight stream delay, um, we're probably going to see... Well, we don't have an ice rod, so we can't really kill the boss. Unless it's on the bridge. You know, I did not check that, come to think of it, since it wasn't a required dungeon. <laughs> oh my... You know... I pretty much opt to, aside from the more obvious things like, is this an Aga Seed? Is this a Ped Seed? Check the trolley locations, check the Ganon Sour Big Key. I mostly like to keep things as prized to myself, but... Like, yeah. I'm just going to confirm and put the kibosh on uh, Ice Rod being here in this dungeon. Uh, it sounds like Azure's in for a bad time. Well, Christos has absolutely torn up um, Eastern Palace. Naturally, the Silver Arrow is going to make this child's play. In fact, he goes for one of the fastest possible armmost kills with Silver Arrows and uh, does a magnificent job of just absolutely erasing the ball. Boss? What boss? You know, you raise a fair point. I didn't see a boss. Chat, did you see a boss? Well, that is three crystals for Christos Owen. Um, Asder only with two, uh, looking for his progression item that we will find, of course, here in Turtle Rock, and he's not far from it. I'm about to pick it up in just a moment here. Um, Christos seems to be on the hunt for this item as well, heading up to Turtle Rock uh, to find the flippers that Asder's about to pick up right here. Yep. Wow, that was. This is a seed and a half if this had been a not spoiler log race. Like, can you imagine the flippers, you know, the, um... What was it? Flute? 
Like, this would have just been awful. Certainly seen a lot of things that are making our um, two contestants today absolutely run circles around Hyrule. Usually you try to chain things together. Unfortunately, we've had to go in opposite ends several times. Uh, the addition of the flute, though, definitely helping with that. Yeah, we need to make this a twice a year thing, Sinek. Gosh, why why did we never do this sooner? <laughs> this, is, this is so fun. You know, it's always entertaining to guess uh, which thing that a runner's going to do, considering that they have such a limited time span to, you know, make their decisions. Um, Christos, for example, taking his time to get all this stuff from um, Hookshot Cave now. We saw um, Azder pop in here earlier uh, to pick up that quake. Um, but we did see Christos pick up a boomerang, something that Azadir did not do. Uh, these decisions, while they may seem pretty small and insignificant, um, when we're talking about a race that could be, you know, in some situations, 50 minutes, an hour, an hour 10, that's critical time differences. So here's another thing to consider, though, and this is something that not a lot of people do think about. Uh, with that boomerang, menu time is a thing. One, two seconds every menu, menu is going to add up really quickly. If you can make your menu slightly cleaner, it will help quite a bit in the long run. Very fair point to make, and particularly when you have um, an extra slot filled up in the menu. Some things overlap on the same slot of the menu, so they don't impact you. Say if, um, if Christos were to pick up a blue boomerang at this point, no difference. Um, not that he wants to, of course, but, you know, every single additional space, exactly what you're saying with, um, your menuing math girl. Now, some people are way better at it than others. I know I would lose a lot of time to that. So oh, I'm sure uh, both of these runners are really good at it. But what I'm saying is if you can make the menu a little cleaner, so you're saving like a second in each menu, that's not an insignificant amount of time you're saving over the course of a run. Now, the real Galaxy Brain plays is finding ways to not have to um, even do menus and dropping bombs down to zero at some point. I mean, I'm sure somebody at some point in a spoiler log race will evacuate their bomb inventory to try and make a menu switch and save some time. Yeah. Also, this is best of three in the uh, at this point. I don't know if it switches to best of five at any time. All right, well, as you're um, moving on to the um, the Argus fight, does not opt to attempt a zero cycle, although with a pattern that he's getting right now um, for movement and for timing. Uh, sorry, that's not a pattern. That's a set um, thing. He's getting a pretty easy one cycle as well, so that's not bad at all. And that's Argus down. Also, nice cane dash. Or King I was rooting thing. for it. There's, no, there's something to be said about golf strats. Ugh. Golf. I, I have seen enough golf in Zelda games to never want to see it again. If Fair you're enough. wondering what I'm talking about, play it! Wind Waker, and in the bottom left-hand corner of the map is a island where you have to push a ball around with the leaf, and it's awful. You know, I mean, it's like a fun, inventive, you know, puzzle to do. It's just not something you want to do ever in a race situation. But Zelda, as a, as a franchise, well known for its innovative puzzle design, um, Certainly something unique in every game, and The Link to the Past, uh, no different. You know, we kind of take that for granted, but Ice Palace, if we ever actually saw it done the normal way, uh, <laughs> is a decent puzzle in of itself, and we even, um, that's a bit of difference in version, actually. Uh, if you played on the Game Boy Advance, the entire Ice Palace puzzle is actually quite different, so there's a reason um, that everything is centralized around the 1.0 version. It's a lot more consistent. 
as well as glitches that we like to use because we like to go fast. Yep. I find it kind of interesting um, that we spent so much time uh, farming for rupees early in the game. Uh, neither of our runners have been to Zora yet. You know, that's a fair point. It might be a late game item, though. Well, actually, what could it even be at this point? Uh... Oh, aren't we basically in Goma? Unless it's Ether. Could be Ether. Oh, we do absolutely require Ether to get into Misery Mire. That's definitely one thing. Uh, but yeah, we are pretty much in Gomo beyond that. I'd say we're in no mode, but I mean, that's kind of a given, isn't it? We're not in no mode until we find the ether, although, like you said. Yeah, I think at this point it has to be ether. Or something leading to ether. Unfortunately, you can't flip from the Zora area. Because annoying game mechanics. The one time Zelda de or the Nintendo people decide to be logical. While we were speaking of Ether, uh, Christos Owen having just picked up uh, Ether from Zora, so finally putting that money to good use. Uh, Azure here putting on a display of what it looks like when you do the um, the Cold Stair fight pretty much under any normal circumstance, say for an NMG run. Um, pretty much specked out, with the exception of his blue mail, how he would be otherwise. With a lot less health. Yep. Um, and besides a little bit of cleanup, pretty good fight. Oh man, I just noticed that he is on six hearts. I mean, I'm sure he has no issues with that, but I would be terrified. You know, one thing I love to see from you know, top tier execution runners, and I would say that these two definitely are, um, certainly sub 130 and NMG, both of them. Um, you know, you see Christos Owen go into that warp tile heading into the dark world. He goes from, he actually passes the uh, warp tile a little bit to get a quick warp. Um, those are free, but that's half a second that you save every time you do it. Um, this is kind of the knowledge that you'll see from runners like Azure and Christos Owen, um, knowing where they can find those opportunities to save every possible fraction of a second. Also, that is an interesting time save. There was a 300 in the uh, Waterfall Ferry. <laughs> wow, that's long foresight. Wow, I'm kind of baffled by that. He must have really looked at the log. Uh, that's what you get when you get high-end runners like this. All right, so all medallions required in tow. Um, both of our runners looking to just clear out their dungeons remaining. Um, which Christos is actually a little behind right now, if my tracker's to be believed. Um, Azder has finished up Ice Palace just most recently, so has a one dungeon advantage up over uh, Christos. Mind you, of course, it is a short dungeon. Yeah. Oh, shortish. It's still got a decent chunk of time for. Even in go mode. Yeah, that's true. Plus, um, Azder can do Eastern Pod combo. Well, we're definitely not going to see the left half of uh, Swamp today from either of these runners. They decided that the contents of those two chests are certainly not worth our time. Um, but that will make for a relatively quick Swamp Palace overall. Um, we've already seen Azure, of course, finish it. Um, and of course, Christos has already finished Palace of Darkness, which he is in now, uh, which Azure's in right now. Man, this would have been such an awful seed, though. Zora and 
flippers and on um, Turtle Rock and the uh, Thieves Town Big Chest. Just like all of that makes it so disgusting. And Aga, yeah. What's vanilla? I'm sorry, what was it? Uh, someone in chat saying something about vanilla. Oh, vanilla Bikium pod. Asder gonna go pick up his last needed key? Question mark? Yeah, he's yeah. just riding his way through uh, Palace of Darkness based on him returning at this point. Um, Crystal Sowen had an opportunity to save some time or Asder attempting a zero cycle on uh, Argus, but that's a notoriously difficult fight. He will save a little bit of time on his Silver Arrow, but not enough to make up for a cycle. Uh, yeah. And there's a bottle. Oh boy. Oh right, Silver's were on Helmastor. Alright, well, with a little bit of stutter stepping, uh, Asdra gets by the first set of mimics. Um, notoriously difficult enemies, particularly for people who are um, who aren't as acquainted with, say, the speed run. Something that you would want to note if you're trying to get better at this room is that you'd want to avoid diagonal movement, um, as that is more likely to put the red mimic in a line of sight with you, um, in a sense that it'll shoot you. If you stick to strictly start strictly cardinal directions, it's a lot easier to get in the lineup um, for your sword beams and if they're the green ones, and of course, uh, if you're just using bow, your bow. And Christos is our first one into Misery Meyer. He looks to be attempting an interesting strat here with the uh, Cane of Samaria for Meyer 2. I'm interested to see what he's going to pull off here. Okay, I've never even thought of doing that. But that is... Wow. Gotta give him a lot of credit for pulling off um, just an extra cycle with that whiz robe. I mean, that's... The timing on Kena Samaria is not friendly there, um, and he got a lot of stuff done with just a few uses. You know, I don't know why, but something about Telmasaur's tail kind of reminds me of a Slinky. You know, we've never seen it confirmed completely stop until you kill the boss, so I mean, it for all in purpose. For, for all intents and purposes, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a Slinky. I mean, we've certainly seen Stranger Things in Zelda f franchise bosses. <laughs> that could be the secret to how he does three attacks at once, unlike pretty much any other boss in the game. <laughs> okay, chat apparently not agreeing with me. <laughs> I don't know why I have Slinkies on the brain. <laughs> I don't know. Because I do. Yo, Asdra getting the god RNG here in uh, Eastern Palace, though, not taking a single step uh, to sidestep those um, cannonballs. Very impressive run through that. I think he was expecting to need to actually sidestep because he didn't dash, unfortunately. Could have saved a little bit of time. Not too often that you get to see um, that kind of RNG in that room, though. Kind of nice. Ooh, that's rough for Christos. Um, unfortunately, kicking the block, having to uh, reset his progress in the room. And if he was going, going to attempt spooky action glitch, um, he just made it a lot more difficult since he has to do a dash before he places that block. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I don't think it's so much as I, that I'm high as I'm just like, I have been awake since, like, 5 a.m. And as I understand it, I think you just cast one on this channel before this race, didn't you? Yeah, 
And I've still got tracker duty after this one. Ooh, it was kind of eerie how that spooky didn't work for Christos there. Um, he was trying to hit a sprite with his fire rod. Um, I believe that the mishap with the switch um, two rooms prior likely had something to do with that not activating. Uh, he probably had the wrong um, value set for his altitude. Um, we'll only lose a handful of seconds, though, five to ten, depending on how he uh, performs it. And we'll be onto the Vitreous fight with almost no health and does not have a means to replenish beyond his red potion. Good thing he's got the silvers. I don't think I've ever seen the blue big eyeball not move. Well, there is actually a fair amount of time, um, probably a good second and a half, two seconds even, um, before he actually moves that he is vulnerable uh, once all the eyes are defeated. So um, if you know exactly where to stand, too, you can get really fast bow or, or arrow shots um, in before that even happens. So Christos and Azure, of course, you know, they're pros of that boss fight. Um, I think they probably, in, well, I'm going to speak for them. It's, it's more fun to do damage boost strats, and I'm making that claim myself. Maybe more fun, but I think that the uh, silvers are definitely quicker. Yeah, in this scenario, too, like, you don't want to risk any health. Um, Christos was in, like, a really dangerous situation. I would not have envied him to do that fight if he didn't have those silvers. Yeah. Although, I'm sure he would have been fine with it. Uh, but yeah, they're very close at the moment. Yeah, common backup would be, like, throwing bombs, actually, would have been probably an appropriate use of um, items inventory in that situation. Um, chat's also pointing out they are very close. Um, Christos has a very fast dungeon here in Ice Palace, and I don't think Azra's going to spend that much time in here either. I mean, he knows where the big key is, so... Oof, and he narrowly misses his um, one cycle uh, whiz robes as well in Mire 2. Uh, might have finished it a little quicker, like a handful of frames than Christos, but they both had a pretty similar room. Um, minus, of course, the menu that Christos had to do. Oh, both dungeons being um, cleared with absolute ferocity. Um, Christos? Yeah, yeah you might want to hit that switch. That is the one downside to doing the uh, dash strat in that room is you unfortunately don't have that sword beam anymore, so he will expend an extra menu um, just hitting the switch. It's pretty easy to forget, too, because, you know, you do this dungeon in several different configurations depending on your item loadout. Um, so I'm not surprised at all to see that that would get mixed up. Yeah. I personally prefer to do the bomb strat in the bombable floor section where you hit the switch as well. So it's kind of something where, like, you know, you, you got to be able to do several strats and keep track of which one you're doing. Uh, Ice Palace notorious for being kind of a nasty place to route in general. Honestly, I found Meyer the hardest to route when I was learning to, like, play rando. Yo, did it get cold in here, or is it just spooky on Azder's side? Ooh, not spooky enough, unfortunately. Wait, why did that not work with spooky working? So, the spooky action glitch um, all hinges on an altitude value that we store um, in a sprite slot. That can be within a range of values, and... Depending on where you are on the screen, you want to hit a switch that's off screen. So you can have an altitude that's too far, you know, north or south on the screen based on that stored value. And basically, um, he had set a value he didn't expect. So it was a little bit outside of the tolerance that he expected from it. Oh, no. Oh. Well. Fairly clean, but 
Oh man, I don't think he meant to uh, run out of arrows there. You know, Vitreus was kind enough to restock him though. Um, you really gotta appreciate that routing from Azir. This is absolutely a 300 IQ decision to replenish his arrows before he goes against tower, clearly. Yeah. Also, there are 22 locations in the basement at Gans Tower, and since we're probably only going to see two or three of those, let's just go by location. Where do you guys think the location will be? I'll say Tile Room. You know, that is something I have not actually checked, so, um, yeah, let's, um, let's call it Bob's Chest. I didn't check today either, so. You know, it, it's a secret to everybody. Except the runners. It's almost a secret to everybody. Well, I mean, like, they're the, the link in this scenario, so they're the ones it's not a secret to. I don't know, I'm trying to roll with it. Um, but we are going to see a sub-one-hour Ganon's Tower entry. Uh, looking like for both of these runners, almost. Or no, um, Crystal still has Tower of Hera, doesn't he? Oh, uh, yeah, he does. Will be. Now, that being said, it is worth considering, um, since they don't have to stop for really anything in Tower of Hera, or Christos doesn't, um, you know, it's not a lengthy difference of time. Um, that climb is pretty quick, and there's no bomb jump to worry about. You have boots, um, hook shot. Uh, Christos could make a pretty fast turnaround for this dungeon. Yeah, but I don't see Aster making significant enough, um, you know, errors in his execution for Christos to catch up. I think Aster's got this one. Well, as our runners are approaching um, the penultimate dungeon of this this uh, race, I'd like to remind everybody that if you're enjoying the race and you're liking the content they're putting out for us um, on their own time, give these uh, two runners a follow, Aster and uh, Christos Owen here on Twitch. Uh, link is in the chat if you'd like to find their channels um, and show them some appreciation and some love for um, putting on this awesome race for us. Huh? Hold on. Speaking of which, who do we have tracking today? I'm not sure. And a shout out to Samimus um, for keeping us up to date on the tracker, which, um, you know, for the commentators, you know, it's not always easy to just check the log in the middle of the race. Sometimes it's actually a lot better to look at the tracker. So thank you so much for uh, keeping us straight. So Ganon's Tower, kind of an interesting place to see the routing of, um, you know, there's some consideration for keys in this dungeon. We're definitely going to need a big key and at least one small key heading up to the top of the tower. Um, but both of these runners are going to have to also consider how many keys they need to get to that point. Um, Azure appears to have had his routing um, either figured out during the cutscene, or he just has really good parsing skills um, to a measure I can't fathom. Yeah. So it's apparently behind Isarmos. Yeah, and with the other 10 arrows that he's picked up, um, very well equipped to finish out this race. Um, we'll probably want to take the 10 extra coming up ahead, just in case he wants to use some in um, in the gauntlet. But, oh, I forgot, that's not a vanilla 10 drop. I, never mind, disregard that. MG mind. Yeah, but there are uh, arrows under the pots in Mimic Room. Second yeah, Mimic that Room, I think. Too. Yeah, yeah, the second one. Um, I believe both of those pots do, although um, it is fairly likely to get them from Mimics, too. Um, yeah. Well, that starts Azure's climb, um, having a little bit of trouble with the first um, set of Mimics in the uh, spike room, but it looks to be cleaning up the rest of them very quickly. You know, that is a good question for post-race. Why is he picking up so many keys? 
Um, to be honest with you, I'm gonna assume that key routing in Gans Tower was not on Christos Owen's mind at any point during this race until now. Um, but as you mentioned, he will have a surplus of keys going up to the top of the tower. Uh, that will prevent him from having to kill a mini Helmosaur at the very top. Um, he will save some time there. Um, and, you know, he may have already seen an item or two that he wants in the climb uh, with those couple of chests. But um, at this point, I don't think anything's going to get picked up. Yeah, I doubt it. I really, aside from Kate, but... I doubt these runners really need it, unless it's, like, right there, like, in the last chest or something. You know, you know that actually is a good point. This is going to be a very dangerous Ganon fight. Um, for those of you who may have, um, you know, closed the door in your minds about how this race is going, it's not unlikely to see a death here. Yeah, these are very high-end runners, so... Yeah, and they're certainly comfortable in the um, in the tempered Ganon fight, with uh, without a doubt. I mean, blue mail definitely helps, but green mail uh, link would take eight hearts of damage from a Ganon hug. So even the smallest execution mistake could be a critical turn in this race. I am very impressed by Azir um, having full health walking into his. Um, or up to the torches here. Um, having these sword beams is also very convenient because it allows him to space certain enemies away. Uh, um, you were saying? Womp womp. <laughs> Either way, it is a, um, it is, it's an exceptional challenge to try and complete the gauntlet without taking damage, so i um, very impressed by that. I think he got a help, couple health drops as well. Oh my gosh, this bombs, please. Pixels be darned, he will get that uh, hole open. Does have five bombs remaining, will not need any of them, um, but will absolutely take his full magic refill. A wise decision before Ganon, as there's no convenient one out um, besides that one. Yeah. Also, for any of you people who are like me and are completely filthy casuals at this, and you have trouble with Moldworm, Fun little thing you can do if you use cape. It just kind of makes the Moldworm fight trivial, both of them. You know, to be honest, I kind of thought you were going to say and suggest the Moldworm bounce, but uh, no. <laughs> we also didn't see anybody hover today, so that, that's a good thing. I mean, Christos still has a chance if he wants to. Uh, can Christos hover? I thought he couldn't. Uh, to be honest with you, these days I wouldn't be surprised if anybody would be able to. Um, there are a lot more hoverers than I would have ever suspected suspected um, a year ago. Although I have not personally seen Christos hover, so I can't speak to that. I'm, I mean, I remember him saying he couldn't a long time ago, but that doesn't mean he hasn't learned since then. Um, Prey and Chad, uh, she was referring to uh, the cape. Helps with Moldorm if you're having trouble with it. Also, yes, there is a new Moldorm bounce that lets you skip using the hookshot or hovering. I'm just going to point out, it is not RTA viable. It's nothing that anybody's probably ever going to be able to find a setup for. Um, Moldorm well, is an extremely know, that's, random boss. That's not entirely true. There is one person who gets it semi-consistently, actually. Yeah, uh, but I wouldn't say that's RTA viable. Uh, their name's Casty Moa, and they get it decently consistent so yeah hit them up if you want to find out how to get it done because i still haven't figured it out and there's a number of things that make that challenging uh, moldorm has a a randomness to his uh, angle that he moves and he also follows a four um four animation cycle so you can manipulate one of those um, by positioning yourself, but the other three have random angles and distances that he travels, so that's kind of a difficult thing to deal with. Um, but yeah, I mean, like you said, it has been proven possible, um, the meme forever, that we would have finally find a counter uh, hovering strategy. Azure yeah. here is moving into phase uh, three, or finishing up phase three in his Ganon fight. We'll be um, moving into his silvers very quickly. Yeah. 
strangely, I had thought just a couple days before that came out, it's just like, because I saw a thing where there was a super bounce off of mobile armor, and it's like, I wonder if that's possible, and then like two days later. And also, as they're about to finish off Ginnon, GG's. Looks like Chad didn't miss out on the uh, two-frame window slash that Azure pulled off with a silverless hit. Uh, yep. Not easy to do. Okay, with an official time, uh, after subtracting the 15-minute study period, 105.29. And with that, Christos will also um, be entering his Ganon fight. It looks like he's going to finish out the uh, race, and I don't blame him. It's a um, pretty small amount of time to finish Ganon, probably two minutes or so. <laughs> Cannon making a point about a, a couple of runners, uh, Act the Boker, and of course, and Keong, uh, two pretty good runners in the uh, scene, <laughs> asking if we uh, copied their routing. Christos, though, and I don't think had that opportunity today, um, but certainly uh, put on a good show for his first race. Now, for those of you who are um, tuning in late to the uh, race, this is actually the first of three potential races between these two runners. Um, game two will be actually following this one, and um, game three will also be on this channel as well. Alright, about to be on phase four once again and decides to stop teleport. Uh, you die know I'm a mystic? No, I am not. Or, oh, them. But I am going to be on the next tracker duty, so <laughs> fun. Well, dang. <laughs> yeah, I go straight from two commentaries to a tracker duty. Also, Aster, you're welcome to come join us if you want. Uh... What was that? That sounded like a lot of Windows noises to me. Also, uh, Christos Owen will um, have a final time of uh, 107.19, so just a two minute difference between the two of them. Well, we're going to figure out um, whether or not they're going to take any sort of break between the uh, two races and um, report back to you, the audience, as soon as we find out uh, what's going on. It looks like Christos would like at least a few minutes. Um, of oh. course, they will have another 15-minute study period, um, so we'll have a little bit of a crew changeover as well uh, during the interim. Uh, but all of this will be taking place on this channel, so folks, please stay tuned. Um, they have another race coming shortly after. I will be joined, I believe, by Wolfman on the comms, um, but I'd like to take this opportunity to thank MathGirl718 for uh, joining me on this race. It was an excellent time uh, casting it with you. Thank you. You're welcome. Also, I will be hopping out of here because I remembered that this is not the race I'm going to be on. It's going to be the other 3 p.m. that I apparently just can't keep all my different leagues straight. You know, between the spoiler logs and the races themselves, I don't blame you. I, I'm in wait. I have just like a hand dipped in all the pots and I just can't remember which is which anymore. <laughs> I don't think anybody could tr uh, blame you for that. It's like, oh, I've just got a hand over here and a foot over there and another hand over there. You know, have you ever considered putting all of these things into a log? I have, and I actually did that for a while, and it has gotten so bad that even putting it in a calendar and a log doesn't help me. So unfortunately, spoiler on that log doesn't really help you out too much. Nope. <laughs> well, we can always try, we can always hope. Um, but, you know, organization methods notwithstanding, it's certainly something of consideration um, in this tournament, which is a unique skill that we've not had to see. Um, in other tournaments and 
Um, you know, it really goes to show how good these two runners are, that they would be within two minutes of each other, considering neither of them really had any major mishaps that weren't basically countered in the other player's, um, you know, performance. Both of them had one long backtrack um, each. And beyond that, I mean, they pretty much found the quickest route through the world that they could. Yep. Though, once we're through with these credits, I think we shall uh, get them with their next room, and then I will be signing off of here so I can get set up for the next race. Sounds good. Um, I think I may actually be stepping away for a few minutes as well, but um, I will be here for the next uh, race cast. I believe it was Wolfman2000 who's joining me. Um, and then we'll see if we end up needing game three. Um, I'm very excited to see how this game two is going to turn out. It will be fun. Uh, I wish I could watch the game too, but you know, best of luck to the runners. All right, it appears that the uh, next race seat has been generated. Um, of course, they do not have a uh, spoiler log just yet. We're going to make sure that the uh, stream captures all of the credits to make sure, of course, consistency with the ROM and, you know, stuff that we do to just make sure everything's working properly on the randomizer side of things um, and verification for the runs. But they will start their 15-minute uh, study period at that point. Uh, now, of course, the commentators do have access to this log. That's part of why we're making so many dumb puns, or at least I am. Uh, I can't speak for Math Girl. She's outstanding on the mic for other, for every other reason. Um, <laughs> but I'm not going to, you know, sink the ship with you on, on board. Uh, that's not fair. I, I don't think I'm a very good commentator, but yeah. Nah, you, you beat up on yourself too much. It was fun. It was fun working with you. Oh, gosh. All right, once we see both of them through the credits, I am going to end this and hop out. You gotta love the stat screen, though. I mean, like, <laughs> just the things that you see in a spoiler log race. We got 10 boss kills with Tempered Sword. You know, GT Big Key number two, 16 bonks. I mean, it, it's just fun to see how much difference there is between, like, a blind run through the game. Uh, so, folks, if you haven't seen the collection rate of 59 before, uh, <laughs> take a look at Azure's side, and uh, Christo's probably only a few more than that. Wow. That is crazy. Add respect to these runners being able to pull off these times and these collection rates. Let alone back to back to back. Um, talk about some stamina. And if you were tuning in late to the race, um, do not despair. This is just the first race finishing up out of their three set. Um, as we mentioned, it is back to back to back. Um, but if you enjoy the race that you just witnessed, I sure as heck did, um, give them a follow. Show them uh, some love here on Twitch. Uh, these folks are probably some of the best of the best as far as um, a link to the past randomizer goes and definitely outstanding speedrunners in their own right. 
Um, both of them well acquainted with the scene since pretty much the first version of the randomizer. Um, if I recall correctly, I'm pretty sure Asder and Chris Owen both uh, heavily involved since then. Back when it was an executable. Um, <laughs> better times in my opinion, but you know, there, there's a lot of quality of life we see now. Um, you definitely didn't see this menu uh, at the end of the screen that shows the full tracker. That was a recent addition. Um, but both of them um, certainly know what to expect out of the randomizer, and I'm sure we're going to see an excellent conclusion to this series. Also with that, 80 out of 216 is not bad. Alright, but I think that'll wrap things up. Any last word? Uh, that's it for me. I'll be stepping away from the mic for about five minutes as well. Um, thank you again so much for joining me on the commentary as well as um, Sammy Moss for doing our tracking today. Um, certainly a pleasure to cast uh, for you guys and with you guys. Pleasure to be here. Alright, have a great day everybody. Yep, stay tuned. We'll be back with you in uh, just a, about 15 minutes.